hello, in this problem we have a sequence n over n squared plus 1, and we're asked two questions. The first one is, is it monotonic? What that means, is it decreasing or increasing? And the second is, is it bounded? Let's go ahead and deal with the boundedness first, so solution. So to show it's bounded, we can show it directly using the definition, or we can simply show that it converges, because every convergent sequence is bounded. So if we just note that this converges to zero as n approaches infinity, uh, we can show that it's bounded by showing it converges. However, let's take a more direct approach because I think it'll be more interesting. So recall the definition of bounded. So recall that a sequence a sub n is said to be bounded if there exists, so the backwards e means there exists, and let's just say a number m such that the absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to m, and this is for all integers little n. I'm being really, really um, pedantic here. I figured why not let me take this opportunity to show you the way to do this with the definition of what it means for a sequence to be bounded. Typically, when you um, take, learn this in calculus, you might not be doing it this way, so it's just a fun way to do it. So we just have to find an m uh, and create this inequality here. Uh, if you like, you can specify that m is positive. That's uh, typically something people do. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the absolute value of a sub n. And that's equal to the absolute value of n over n squared plus 1. And this is going to show you a technique that's actually really useful in proof writing. So that's another reason I wanted to do it this way. It's worth learning some extra stuff. So we want to make this less than or equal to something. So whenever you have a denominator like this, in order to make this fraction smaller than whatever I write here, I can just do this. I can drop the 1. And the reason I can do that, okay, the reason I can drop that positive number is because n squared plus 1 is bigger than n squared, so it makes the fraction over here on the left smaller than the fraction over here on the right. right? It's actually a smaller number because the bottom part is bigger. right? Just think simple. Think like 1 over 5 is smaller than 1 over 4. And 5 is a bigger number than 4, right? So the same thing is happening here. Uh, and it's a little more clear because we're adding that 1. So it's certainly bigger than n squared. And um, all of these are positive integers. So we can drop the absolute value. And at the same time now, let's just go ahead and cancel one of the n's. So we're left with 1 over n. And this is certainly less than or equal to 1. And that's because n is greater than or equal to 1, right? So the smallest it can be is 1. And if you were to divide both sides of this inequality by n, you would end up with something like this, which you can then read backwards. 1 over n less than or equal to 1. Boom. Really important type of thinking if you ever take some advanced calculus. So note, so so, a sub n is less than or equal to 1. And that's true for all integers n. I should say, I should really say positive integers n, right? So because uh, you know we're assuming the sequence here starts at one. So all right, so, so that's so it's bounded. So thus it is bounded. So to show it's monotonic, um, what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna take a really um, rigorous approach here. We're gonna do the following. So I'm just gonna let f of x be equal to x over x squared plus 1. So we're thinking uh, of our sequence, which was a sub n, n over n squared plus 1, as a function of x. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to take the derivative and see if it's positive or negative. Remember, if the derivative is positive on an interval, the function is increasing on an interval. If the derivative is negative on an interval, the function is decreasing on an interval. So let's go ahead and take the derivative and see what comes from that. And just recall that there is a formula for the derivative of a quotient. Uh, I hate to use the same variable, but I will. So if you have f over g, and you're taking the derivative, 
you can think of f as your top function and g as your bottom function. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom one squared. So here x is our top and x squared plus one is our bottom function. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is simply 2x using the power rule, all over the derivative of the bottom one being squared. Just some quick quotient rule action. So this is f prime of x. So the one times this is just going to be x squared plus one, no big deal there. And then here, x times 2x is minus 2x squared. And on the bottom here, you have, and this is just one way to do it. There's other ways to do it, right? This is just, I figured, let me just take this video as an opportunity to show you how to do it this way. So x squared minus 2x squared is negative x squared, right? Because there's really a 1 here. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then plus 1. And this here is x squared plus 1 squared. And in all of this, we have to remember um, that x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, that's really important. Let's write it like this, 1 minus x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. This is interesting. I have not done this problem uh, before making this video. I usually never do that. Um, so this is interesting because this here is going to be um, less than or equal to 0 because the smallest, uh, rather the biggest this can be is when x is 1, right? If x is 1, you get 1 minus 1 squared, so you get 0, so the whole thing is 0. Now, x is an integer here, right? Remember, this is going to be a sequence. So when x is 2, you get that, right? That's less than 0. And the bottom is always positive, so this thing is going to be negative for x bigger than 1. So for x bigger than 1, uh, f is decreasing. Right, so uh, in this case, our sequence is decreasing. So you just simply say a sub n is decreasing, right? Because if it's decreasing for values of x uh, bigger than one, it's certainly decreasing for integers bigger than one as well. So, so it is monotonic, right? It is monotonic, mono, monotonic. It's interesting. The text that I got this from uses the words uh, increasing and decreasing. Um, some books use the word non-increasing and non-decreasing, which have slightly different meanings. But ho I hope this video has been helpful to you in some way. Uh, it's a lot of math. Good luck.